Hi everybody and welcome back to my intro to analytics class. Um, I am Chad Murphy also known as Soccermetric on Twitter and today we're going to talk about correlation um, and specifically the correlates of winning. What do winning teams look like? What do winners do? Um, correlation basically is a fancy way of saying what two things go together. So when we see one thing, when do we see another thing? Or when we see one thing, when do we not see another thing? That's all correlation is. Um, you've probably heard the word, you've probably used it in your life as a regular person, not an analytics person. Um, but today we're going to go through the idea a little bit more. We're going to talk about how it works. We're going to go into, I always say we're going to do the math, but we're actually just going to go into Excel and um, show you how to do it there. We're going to test some you know, theories about what correlates with winning or not. We're going to have uh, some exciting guest speakers today. So this should be really good, but all I want you to think about is correlation just means what two things go together. Um, and from there, you'll be able to start building your models. Um, everything you do in analytics builds on the idea of correlation. So you need to have a solid foundation on that before we can start doing some linear regression models or even machine learning. Um, this is the foundation of everything you're going to do. So we're going to start here. Uh, we're going to go through some examples. We're going to learn a few things. Um, just like last time, I'm going to post a bonus extras with some R and some programming because I got some good feedback on Twitter that people liked that. So um, with that all being said, let's go ahead and just get started. So the fundamental question we're going to answer today is, what do winners do? We hear a lot of times the idea of, you know, so-and-so team deserved to win today, or so-and-so deserved a point out of this. We're talking about relegation teams, things like that. Fairly common both in the media, on Twitter, among fans, things like that. Um, but when you say that, what do you mean? It's another example of you're doing analytics all the time. You're maybe just not using the same language that analytics folks use. So let's start doing that. Um, when you say your team should have won, when you say your team deserved to win, or something like that, what do you mean? Describe to me what that is. Um, in analytics terms, what sorts of stats should we look at? What sort of numbers, what sorts of things should we be looking at? The key here is not to get fancy. We're not going to do anything particularly complicated today. Everything we're going to do is pretty straightforward. It's all common sense. We're just going to take that common sense and apply analytics terms to it. That's it. Um, and I hope you've noticed that's a theme of the course, is that none of this is particularly mathy. It's just specific language we use to communicate analytics. Um, you're using these types of words all the time. Don't get fancy. Keep it simple. So our special guest here is Pep Guardiola, the head coach of Bayern Munich. He's apparently in Germany, drinking himself a nice beer. Um, not wearing the later hosen right now, but he wants to tell you all, and I'm not going to try to do a Pep Guardiola impression, but he wants to tell you all that the first thing that correlates with winning, what winning teams do, is winning teams keep the ball. Um, you've heard him say a thousand times, we deserve to win today. There's even quotes out there of him saying, I don't necessarily care if we win as long as we maintain possession for as long as possible. Um, in Guardiola land, the longer you hold the ball, the better your team is doing. The more possession you have, the better off you are. Um, so we're going to test Pep's theory today. We're going to do another hypothesis test here. Just like last time we tested whether Liverpool was better off under Jurgen Klopp. Today we're going to test Pep Guardiola's hypothesis of do teams who have higher levels of possession win more games? This is very exciting. So... Let's go head over to Excel, and Pep is super excited about this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run over to Excel, and I will be right back with your first hypothesis test of this lesson. The first of many, I might add. And we're back. So we're going to test Pep's theory that more possession is a good thing. Teams who hold the ball longer on score more points. And we're going to do it by using last year's English Premier League uh, numbers. So here I have a quick little spreadsheet I put together with the average percentage possession each team had for a game and then how many points they earned across the season. Um, simple test here. Higher percentage should mean more points earned. Lower percentage should mean lower points earned. If Pep's right, successful teams 
will have more possession. Unsuccessful teams, less possession. Um, so let's find out what happens. Um, first, I want to do the eyeball test. So we're going to look, and I have the data sorted in reverse order. And I'll extend this a little bit so you can read all the team names. From reverse order from lowest number of points to highest number of points. So we have QPR, who got relegated, obviously, at the bottom. Chelsea, who won the league at the top. And if you sort of look at this, just give it a simple look. You notice everybody, you know, from Stoke down had under 50% possession. Barely held the ball. Um, and then everybody from Swansea up had over 50% possession. You can almost see, I mean, just by looking at this, a linear trend. I guess West Ham's actually an exception right there. Um, but other than West Ham, what I said just fits. You can almost see, though, as you eyeball it, a linear trend going upward from bottom to top. It's not quite perfect. Man United had the ball more than Chelsea. They didn't earn nearly as many points. But it's actually pretty good. Um, it's pretty strong correlation, it looks like. So the first thing I want to do is plot these data. Um, every data scientist I've ever spoken to says the first thing you do is plot your data to look at it. So we're going to, in Excel, highlight the two columns, go to Insert, go to Scatter Plot, and you just click that one right there. And it gives you the world's ugliest scatter plot. As a note, I hate plotting in Excel, but I'm doing it for you guys. That's I'm here for you. So to fix this up real quick, to make it look better, um, I click on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, right-click, and I do Format Axis. And where it says Minimum, I click on Fixed, and I put it to a reasonable value. For here, I'll do 40, because that's a roughly the lowest value of our data. Cleans it up a little bit, less white space, less chart junk, as we call it. Um, I also, on the tab here, I click Layout 1, because I think that's the prettiest one. Um, it gives you kind of a nice thing. You can easily change a few things. Um, you can change the um, axes title, so I can just call that points. I can call that possession just by clicking. So what I did there was, by the way, I clicked on it, deleted, and typed. Delete that um, legend. You don't need it. Put in a nice chart title. Is nine tenths of winning. Oops, and I clicked it and I moved it over. Recenter it, and there you go. You have kind of a scatter plot. If you look at this scatter plot, you see an upward trend. Higher the percentage, the more points you earned. Um, as a side note, too, you always put on your horizontal axis again your independent variable the one you're using to predict your dependent variable. So we're using possession to predict the number of points earned. Um, so possessions on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, points are on the y-axis, the vertical axis. You can see an upward trend here. If you look, basically if you draw your line of best fit, which we'll talk about a lot more when we get to the regression chapter, you can see it goes sort of like this. It goes in an upward direction. Um, that makes me think that Pep's right. Possession actually is useful in winning soccer games. Um, Pep's a smart man. That passes the eyeball test. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to try again. We're going to move this out of the way up here. Uh, we're going to leave it where it is. Fine. It's being difficult. Um, but now we're actually going to run the correlation math in Excel. And it's super easy. Let me show you how to do it. Click on a cell here. You hit equals to tell Excel we're doing a formula. You type in Corel, which stands for correlation, and as you can see right here, it returns the correlation coefficient between two data sets. Parentheses, array one, you just highlight possession percent. Doesn't actually matter which one you do, we'll start with possession because it's on the left. Comma, array two. End your parentheses, hit enter, and you get this number 0.834796. So, as Pep predicted, we have a 0.834796 correlation. That number's meaningless so far, right? Let's talk about it a little bit more. What this number is, is it's called Pearson's R. And it's a lowercase r, not to be confused with r squared. And many soccer analytics types and sports analytics types in general 
focus too much on the R squared. I will not get into that rant right now. I've got a blog on it if you care. You don't. Pearson's R, lowercase r. So you would just type r equals 0 0.83. You would do everything to two decimals just because why not? What does Pearson's r mean? It's another good question, Pep. Let me tell you. It's a number between 0 and 1, or I guess between the absolute value of it is between 0 and 1. For now, we're going to talk about positive correlation. Between 0 and 1. And it represents the higher the number is, the higher the correlation between two variables, the more closely related they are. We have a number here. It's fancy. It's got a lot of decimal points. But all it's telling us is it's between 0 and 1. The closer to 1, the stronger the correlation. So in this case, we have a number that's very high. I mean, it's 0.83. That's literally 83% of the way to 1. What that means is that possession has a very strong correlation with winning. Teams that hold the ball more tend to win a lot more. So we've done our first hypothesis test, and we've shown Pep is right. 0.83, strong correlation with winning. Life is good. We're going to come back to the difference between positive and negative later, but for now know that this positive correlation, it's a positive number, means that as possession goes up, the higher your amount of possession, the more points you earn, the more you win. Life is good. Pep is right. So let's go back to the classroom and keep going. Good job, Pep. You are currently at the head of the class. You were right. Teams with more possession do better in the EPL. And I created this graph in R. Um, if you haven't watched the um, extras on the Jurgen Klopp video, Lesson 2-3, it's potentially worth watching if you're going to do this on your own. I, GG plot is incredibly powerful. It seems intimidating at first. I try to walk through it a little bit there. I'll do some more videos showing it, including for this lesson. Look how much prettier this graph is than the one I made in Excel. And it really wasn't that much more difficult, to be honest. Enough R evangelism. As you can see here, we've got the best fit line I talked about and a 95% confidence interval drawn in. And I've got all the different team names here to show you exactly where they are on the plot. As you can see, they're really close to the line. This dispersion is not that much. Um, as an assignment, let me actually suggest you, for you all, you have homework for this one. And you need to go to a website called guessthecorrelation.com. And it's going to show you different levels of correlation. It shows you strong correlation, weak correlation. You'll guess them. It'll be really interesting. Um, but Pep is right. Teams with more possession do better in the EP.